I started in the cell therapy field based on peripheral blood NK cells. And, you know, the one thing we learned from that experience is that those are individual products. The other limitations are that it's still cumbersome and expensive. You know, every cell infusion that we've given to refractory AML patients or lymphoma patients or solid tumor patients is finding an HLA haploidentical half-matched donor. Doing an apheresis over a five-hour period, enriching for NK cells and giving them back. And that in and of itself is a dosing limitation. You know, you're able to, we were only able to give one collection to get one dose of cells for one cell product. So it's really not, at least in the solid tumor setting, fully explored the possibility about how to make this exportable for a multi-dosing strategy. And this is when we started to work with Fate Therapeutics and started to really try to understand how we can make an off-the-shelf allogeneic NK product. So, you know, what they brought to the table is this IPS background. You know, they're able to modify this IPS background with multiple gene edits. And we're now studying a number of different cell types and models. The poster that is hanging up now that I'll be talking about is our work using an IPS-derived NK cell platform that has a high affinity CD16 receptor because that's an important activating receptor. Um, it has membrane bone IL-15. And then it has a CD38 knockout, which is an enzyme that degrades NAD. And when you knock it out, you get higher NAD levels and better metabolic activity in combination with the membrane bone IL-15 in the construct. So the idea is to give the cell, we think that these gene edits make the cell live longer. The work that I'm gonna be presenting this afternoon is in our work putting human glioblastoma brain tumor, um, patient-derived samples into the brain of mice and putting in these iPS-derived NK cells. And at least in the preclinical animal models, we're super excited that it controls the disease we also are exploring better ways to get that second signal, which I think is really key for cancer efficacy. And in this case, we're talking in the poster about B7H3 targeting through a number of different mechanisms, whether they be through an engager, chimeric antigen receptor, and there's a couple of examples in the poster on that.